Hey guys, I'm Tom, and welcome back to another Terrain video. Today we're going to be looking at a variety of tips and tricks that you can add to your terraforming arsenal. The commands shown are from plugins, and so you'll need a server in order to use them. You can join the Bakery Creative server, where all of these tools are already available for you to use for free, and you can export your builds from there if you wish. But if you would like to build on a private server, I've linked all of the downloads in the description for you as well. First, I'll show you guys a neat technique that you can use to quickly make fantasy floating islands. Using the Go Brush plugin via the Flint item, enable the brush, set the height map to Mesa, my personal favorite, the brush size to 75 and the intensity to 8. Then you can start to build up a shape that roughly resembles a cone, gradually decreasing the size of the brush as you build upwards. Once you're happy with the base shape, put the cone fully within your world edit selection and use the smooth command. The smooth command actually defaults to a maximum smoothness, so you can try a lower number like 1 or 2 in order to achieve a slightly rougher appearance. Once you've done that, position yourself above the selection and use the cut command, followed by the flip command while facing the sky, then simply paste. Clearly the top of your floating island will be looking rather flat, and so I'd recommend using Voxel Sniper's ball and blend ball brushes, as well as the go brush that we just used to introduce some varying height levels. For some simple texturing, first replace the angle mask from 0 to 30 degrees with green wall. The syntax for arc angle is minimum angle, max angle, range, dash O. The O flag stands for overlay and stops our grass placeholder from appearing on top of itself. You can think of the range as the computer breaking up your selection into lots of small regions and then checking how steep each region is. 0 degrees is the horizontal. 10 degrees is a gentle incline, 80 would be near vertical, and 90 is vertical. The effect is more clear on steeper terrain. Then I replace the blocks below the wall with dirt or a similar color block, and finally I replace the air above the green wall with a Perlin noise pattern of grass, ferns, and air, and the wall itself with another Perlin noise pattern of grass blocks, moss blocks, and rooted dirt. You could also texture the rock with noise patterns, but I think you get the idea. Here's a larger project with floating islands built via the method that I just demonstrated. Don't worry if you're a bit confused with the noise syntax, we'll cover that in the next tip. Random texturing like in this example has really fallen out of fashion in modern building, so to speak. Gradients dominate the landscape, pun intended, and you can apply linear gradients quickly using the Go Paint plugin via the feather item. Select the gradient brush, adjust the parameters, add your gradient here, and the block that you are painting onto here. To apply gradients in a more noisy fashion, we can use the noise patterns from the Fast Async World Edit and Archeon plugins. The syntax is as follows. The noise pattern name with a hashtag in front, the size of the pattern, where a larger number makes a wider pattern, and then your material or block list. This spooky looking chunk of text acts as a material, and so you can use it in set and replace commands as if it were a block. Here I've laid out the most useful noise patterns from four. We have Perlin, Simplex, which is just a smoother Perlin, Ridged Multifractal, and Veronwa. For all of these examples, I've used a pattern size of 10 and three wall types in the block list. It's a good idea to always use wall placeholders when coloring your terrain with noise, since the plugin does not organize the blocks in the pattern in the same order that you type them, and so this will jumble your gradient. Once you've applied the noise pattern, you can replace the blocks individually. The Archeon plugin has a few interesting noise patterns, Turbulence, Fractal, and Electric. However, they seem rather similar to the Perlin and RMF patterns from before, and so I don't consider them to be that useful. Sometimes the server will have a limit on the number of blocks that you can change with one command, and you can get around this by using a large sphere brush and using the mask command while holding said brush. If you are applying a noise pattern with a brush, it will stick to the same random seed. The Archeon noise pattern that we are most interested in is Arc Veronwa, which forms a splendid contraction crack texture. I've demonstrated in previous videos how this texture can be used in coloring terrain, but I'll show a couple more tricks using the same effect. The first is this lava texture, made by setting the cracks to lava and the fragments to a blackstone gradient. You can use this to recreate magma oceans on alien worlds or in evil fantasy settings. The second, oppositely, is this cracked ice sheet texture, formed by setting the cracks to water, the fragments to packed ice, and the packed ice next to the water with blue ice. You can then top this off with a Perlin noise pattern of snow and air above the packed ice. 
This texture looks great at the base of snowy mountains. This next technique is an absolute game changer and perhaps the highlight of the video. Archeon has a tool called Terragen, which allows you to instantly create terrain within your selection using one of these many noise patterns on the screen now. There's a lot to choose from, and so I'll only be focusing on one example in this video. The syntax for Terragen is TG, then the noise pattern name, then your material, the height, and the size. Or zoom is probably a better way to say it. One Terragen command forms some lovely and varied terrain, but what if we were to layer multiple Terragens within one another? Recently, I've been experimenting with this combination. I start with a Euclidean Terragen, with a size of 200 and a zoom of 0.7. This forms some incredibly steep mountains with funky columnar shapes. Then I move my selection 100 blocks upwards and throw in some simplex and natural Terragens, both with a size of 7 and a zoom of 0.7 again. These commands cut off the steep mountains, separating them between some comparatively flat ground, which we can now build on. I usually texture this terrain starting with an angle mask, like I showcase with the floating islands, and then noise patterns for the rest. The thumbnail wasn't clickbait, you really can throw this terrain together in 5 minutes. I would like to emphasize that there is an incredible amount of experimentation that can come from this technique, since the combination of noise patterns, selection heights, generation heights, and zoom levels is essentially infinite. I realized that I've been throwing around a whole bunch of complicated commands in the syntax, so I thought that this would be an excellent opportunity to plug my community Discord server. It's a great space to ask questions, learn, show off your builds, and get constructive feedback. That'll be the first link in the description. We're going to look at Loft now, one of the most powerful tools that Archeon has to offer. Using the paper item, left click to start a frame, then right click to add points to that frame. When it comes to filling in your loft selection, the plugin calculates how to connect all of your frames together smoothly. Loft is normally used to quickly build things that resemble flowing cloth, like flags, giant wings and such, but you can also use it to form the base structure of large cliffs. This is best shown with an example. Using the up command, position glass blocks so they divide your cliff face into multiple layers, which will become your loft frames but make sure that no two glass blocks in a given layer line up perfectly, as this is what will introduce variation into your cliff when you fill it in. The loft tool handily displays an outline as you add points, so that you can have a rough idea as to what the filled in shape will look like. The loft remove command removes the last point, and the loft clear command removes the entire thing. Once you're happy with this shape, type loft set stone to fill it in. Then I like to use the metable brush from the meta brushes plugin to add some extra depth. This brush adds blobs that roughly take the shape of the surrounding blocks. After that, I use the blend ball brush to smooth everything out, especially the transitions between the cliff and the flat areas. Here's how I would apply this steep cliff technique in an actual build. It will obviously look a lot better with a nice noise pattern. Loft also appears to be an efficient tool for making rivers. Here I've hollowed out a section of a hill that I quickly made with a simplex terragen. At the top of one side, I start a frame by left-clicking, and then right-click points down that bank. Then at the top of the opposite side, I start a second frame, and then add points down the opposite bank. To add the water, I use the command loft set water with the D flag, which stacks the water down to the floor, or the riverbed in this case. Your river is unlikely to be perfect, so you'll probably have to fix it up by hand around some of the edges. If you're wondering why my water isn't flowing, it's because of the Builder's Utilities plugin, which prevents all block updates. Archeon's Boulder Brush is an incredibly versatile tool, and I'll quickly guide you through its parameters. The syntax is Arc Brush Boulder Material Length Smoothness Height Width. With all of the size parameters set to the same value, we can observe the effect of changing the smoothness. Zero is low poly which means that the boulder has clearly defined faces, whilst 5, the maximum, is much more rounded. Setting the length to be high and the other sizes to be low, we can see how the first number in the syntax controls the length, parallel to our orientation. Through the same method, we can demonstrate that the third value controls the height, and the final value controls its width, perpendicular to our view. 
A pretty neat technique is that you can actually provide minimum and maximum values for your size parameters, and the plugin will choose random numbers between them. This allows you to quickly drop down boulders of varying sizes using the same brush. A couple useful flags for the arc boulder are dash A, which places it completely parallel lengthways to your orientation, great for creating cavern ceilings, and dash F, which makes the rocks fall to the ground. I've also got a couple bonus tips for you guys. The first being that you can actually use these arc boulders to brush in leaves on mega trees instead of a sphere brush. This technique is only indirectly linked to terrain, however it was something that I learned after posting my ultimate trees guide that I really wanted to make you guys aware of. My second bonus tip is to bring your attention to Archeon's spike brush, which I've used in this example to add some giant crystals to the base of my floating island. The syntax is arc brush, spike, material, length, start radius, end radius. These make excellent additions to any fantasy or alien landscape. And that concludes the tips for today. I felt really great returning to this style of video, so if you learned anything at all, I'd really appreciate a sub. Thanks for watching. Then I like to use the Meatball Brush. <laughs> oh, yes, from the Meatball Brushes plugin.